Okay, so there's part of, <clears throat> well, so let's talk about the learning library now because we haven't done a good job on that, okay? So part of what we do when you sit down with your principal and you identify what you need to work on for either your core job description or your specializations, you're going to have a list of things you need to learn. Elena gave me a list. I got 10 things on Okay. Well, what the principals need to do then is we need to work to make sure that, number one, you get the, the opportunity to do on-the-job training. Okay. And number two, um, that we have stuff in the learning library for you that will address those issues. Okay. And that's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to work on it. We're going to hopefully have a really good learning library at some point. Okay, so here's what it means to have something in the learning library. So did you guys print out the card, learning library card? Okay, so I call it a card because it's like a lab, like a library catalog. It's this one. Oh. Okay, and this gets back to Hunter's question about the menu. Quiet title. Okay, so if, if I didn't have you guys print it out, but there's a menu, a professional development menu, right? Okay, so if you read an article, it's two points, I think. If you watch a video, it's two or three points. If you get your CST1, it's it's like 300 points, I can't remember, right? Okay, so here's a couple key things. One is, if you wanna count, if you wanna count points, I need to know what you're doing, there needs to be a card, and Monique needs to track it. Okay, so there you go. There, there's a card. So there's an article in American Surveyor about quiet title. Okay, so it's it's super simple, right? What's the category? What are you trying to learn? And then I want you to evaluate your knowledge after you're done to make sure something actually sunk in while you were watching Netflix and reading American Surveyor, right? Okay, so that's a little bit of prep time. Okay, but here's what here's what I do. You guys don't know this, but because I have no life. At night, when I read survey magazines, if I think there's an article that would be a good fit for the learning library, I tag it. Right? And we're going to start adding those to the learning library for you guys. And whenever you want, you can go in there and grab something out of the learning library. Okay? okay? So if you guys find stuff that you think, if you see a video or an online class or a book or a magazine article and you think, hey, this is something I would like to learn that would help me with my specialization or my job description, bring it to me. We'll... we'll We'll catalog it and we'll get it in the learning library yeah, for you. All the Caltrans videos. Yep, whatever. I mean, you like you guys, you know, tailor it to what you need. I don't want to catalog everything on earth, right? I'm, I'm gonna, we'll do it as you guys need it. Um, now, there's going to be, a, a, I would probably say, a majority of things that you need to learn that there is not going to be a good learning resource for. And so then we will create it. Okay? We will write an article or I will do a, a video or we'll do a fantastic first Friday and we'll create that material for you guys. Okay? I don't know anybody else that does that for their employees. Right? So we will do that. We will get you guys what you need to make the progress that you need to make. So let's talk a little bit about the point system and how it works because I know there's some confusion on that. Okay? So here's how it works. And there's a reason we built the system this way. It's a point system, and you got points on two sides of the board. You got an RH system and you got a U system. You got an RH side and a U side. Okay, and it's like a, a it's like a match system. Okay, so let's just use let's pick on Austin because he's he's a good guy and he'll let me do that. Okay, so let's let's say Austin goes and passes his CST. No, let me let me let me back up. So let's say we do we do Austin's annual review, which is probably coming up in the next couple months. We do his annual review, and I look at his annual review, and I say, you know what, Austin? I think you've earned a dollar fifty. Okay. So I think through on-the-job training, you've earned one hundred and fifty points, or a dollar fifty. Okay. So you can imagine this like a bank account over here. Okay, and what Austin just did is he put a dollar, he put 150 points in on the RH side of the deposit, RH side of the account. Yes. So my question about that is, those, because you know you're showing us stuff like this, like this right here. He said it's worth two points, whatever things we can do from the library. Yep. Those 150 points, are those just an estimate from our look aheads? Is that what it is? Yeah. No. It's it's points you've earned through your on the job training. Hang on one second. 
So, Austin, what's something you know? What's something that you learned to do in the last three months? Something new. Uh, most well, most recently, I can think of putting together deliverables. That's something. Okay, so that's uh, yeah. So I don't know. What's that worth to me? I don't know. It's worth some points. Yeah, corner records. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a lot of corner records lately. You know, I don't know. That's worth some points. I'd have to think about it. Like putting together deliverables. I don't know. That might be worth. That might be worth five points to me because that's a pain in my butt. I don't like doing it. Yeah. yeah so like so there's some subjectivity there. That's right? just yeah. I'm just curious how that works. Where it's like, are you just looking at that catalog of? stuff from our look aheads and you're just like eh, no. this, is, this is worth about that no what i gotta do is say how has austin increased his value to me in the last year and part of what i do is i think to myself all right is the compensation that austin is receiving reasonable given his skill set right um and that's just that's a judgment call that i gotta make as a principal right and like look i have an incentive to not screw that up because if I let that get too low, what's going to happen? I'll lose people. Do I want to lose people? No. On the other hand, if I let it get too high, what happens to the company? Okay, so I've got a really strong incentive to get that right where I need it. Okay, now does that mean I'm always going to get it perfect? No, but we'll make adjustments. Like, guess what? If I'm too low and this deal works the way we're supposed to, I'm going to know because what are you going to bring me? And then I'm going to go, you know what? I'm too low. I need to bump. I, this needs to get adjusted. Right? If I'm too high, I'll know because what is the profitability on our jobs going to look like? It's going to go down. We're going to be getting murdered. And then I'm going to have to come to some people and say, hey, you're not performing at the level I need you to. We're going to go bankrupt. Right? So I think the incentives are there for me to get that right. But you're right. It's, it's not 100% it's not black and white. And I don't necessarily know of a way to do that. Um, Here's what we could do, Austin, and I need to think, think some more about this, but it's possible we could map out ahead of time the things you were going to learn and determine what those on the job and determine what those would be worth. Sure. I'm not opposed to that. I need to think some more about that. Okay, um, that would that would be a good thing to do. Um, anyways, like what I what I what I've told you guys is, I suspect for most of you folks, once a year, is there going to be something on this side of the ledger? Yeah. yeah, there will there'll be there'll be one to three dollars on that side of the ledger probably every time we meet. Okay, now let's just let's use that. Go back to Austin's example. So I do his annual review, and I'm like, you know what, Austin, you earned a dollar fifty. Austin doesn't get the dollar fifty because Austin has to match with 150 points from the professional development program. Now you may ask, why would I do that? Okay, and there's a very good reason. Do I want to have to pay to train you and then turn around and pay you for the training I just paid for? <laughs> I will do that, but here's the deal I make with you. If I'm going to train you and then pay you more when I train you, you got to put some in. You got to put it, so I'm asking you for a 50 50 match, right? In other words, you've got you to gotta do some on your own to improve your skill set, right? Okay, because look, I got paid to do, I got paid for, I, I mean, I learned stuff on the job without a doubt. But like, nobody paid me to study for my LS. Nobody paid my exam fees, right? Nobody paid me to get my pilot cert. Nobody paid for my UAV course. I, I did all that on my own. Okay, you guys don't have to do any of that on your own, right? I'll, we'll pay for your UAV course. I'll pay for your test. We'll pay for your LSIT, right? Okay, so what I'm asking for is, you to make some effort to improve in your own skill set outside of what I pay you to do on the job. Okay, now, not everybody's gonna like that. And that's okay. Under that system, what kind of employees am I gonna be left with? Well, Think about it for a minute. Go above and if beyond. people leave because they don't like that system, what does that mean about, about, what does that mean about their attachment to this career? They don't want to improve. It's not worth it to them. It's not worth it. They're just here to take a check. Is that the kind of people we want on the team? No. Okay, now, so let's think about this for a second. Let's go back to Austin's example. Okay, so he comes to me this year and decide he's got a dollar he's got a, a dollar fifty, 150 points on my side of the ledger. But Austin hasn't earned any points. Okay, so he doesn't get his raise. Alright, so then he goes back in the next year 
And, I, and the next year, I'm like, man, we do his annual review, and he just has a stellar year next year. And I'm like, you know what, Austin? I think you've owned, I think through your on-the-job training, you've earned 200 points. Okay. So now, what does he have on my side of the ledger? He's got a three dollar and fifty cent an hour raise coming. But it stays in the bank until he what? Matches it. Until he matches it. Okay, now let's say he goes and um, let's say that year he knows that, right? Because this year he got he got he got crushed. He got he got the gauntlet thrown down. So he's like, you know what, next year I'm not gonna play. I wanna get my part done. Okay, so let's just say he reads one magazine article a week from the learning library. Okay? And he goes to the to the annual conference. Which by the way I will pay for and take him. Okay, so if you look if you remember our menu, what's an article worth? Two, two points. Two points. So he does one a week. So he's got fifty two weeks. So what did he just earn? Yeah, so he earned let's just call it a hundred, we'll just round. So he earned a hundred points for that. Okay, now how long would it take him to read a three-page article and fill out that quiz? Half hour. I didn't say half an hour to an hour. Okay? Is that attainable? Yeah. Remember, that's one of the goals. Attainable. Right? I'm asking him, he could do that on one lunch break a week. Gives him a dollar. Okay, now, let's say he goes to the conference. I haven't done this yet, but let's say he goes to a three-day conference and he goes to the classes and I test his knowledge. I don't know, that might be worth, that might be worth 200 points to me. Okay, now, let's just total up what he's got on both sides of the ledger. So over here he's got 350 points, or $3.50. Okay, and now over here, that year, he went to the conference and did his weekly articles. He's earned 300 points, or $3. What's his raise at the end of next year? Three. So, oh. so oh, that makes right. more sense because, say, in this example, his first year he earned a dollar fifty of um, on the job training, but he didn't match it. He that stays that, in the bank. Yeah, that's what, I, and it just adds to the where he's working on his, you know, you section. Yeah. He's still earning on the job yeah. training. You're not losing anything on my side of the ledger. It stays in the ledger till you're ready to match it, right? Just like, yes. And so this is also kind of encouraging employees to go out and get their certs. Get yeah, their absolutely. I want you guys yeah. to do that. Okay, so now look. So he gets his $6 raise. How would you like that, Austin? That'd be very nice. That'd be nice. Austin would like a $6 raise. I'd like to give him a $6 raise. Okay, let's keep our, let's keep our example going. All right, now, let's just say the following year, Austin just, he just is not motivated, and he just does the same old thing at work, right? And I, I don't know how realistic this is, but let's say he just comes in, I'm like, you know what, you gotta learn nothing new in 2023, bro. You're just doing the same old thing. So he didn't earn anything on the job. Okay, but he went out and he got a CST. So I think a CST one, I can't remember, it's like 200 points, I think, or 250, I can't remember. But he goes and he passes his T he passes his CST. Okay? He does not need points on my side of the ledger to get that money. He gets it. As soon as he as soon as he passes and I see the paperwork, he gets his two bucks. Okay? Because who made that effort? He did. He did. I'm gonna pay him for it. Right? Now, let's say the next year he goes in. And he earns his 200 points through on-the-job training, right? He's already earned the two bucks for the CST. That will automatically come out, okay? We just we keep a running ledger on both sides, okay? What I'm trying to do is incentivize a little bit of your own professional development, okay? And, and look, look, I could just teach you guys everything you need to know and pay you for it, okay? And it, and it wouldn't be a big deal. We could probably afford to do it. But I'm also trying to screen. I'm trying to do, remember we talked about the blue bar? If you cross the blue bar on the career path, you, you're really going to be in it for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons, right? And so I'm trying, this is this is set up the same way. What Do I want people here that don't really love their job? 
Yeah. No, like if you're here, I want you to really love what you do, right? If, oop, I'm drooling on my table. If you if you think you want to be, you know, if you think you want to be an interior decorator, and that's really what's going to make you happy, what do I want you to do? Go be an interior decorator. Yeah, like I want to go help you be a good interior decorator, right? Um, you know, I want people here that really love what they do for a living because people that really love what they do for a living, what kind of work do they do? Great work. Great work. Yeah. Why do I, well, you know, like I geek out on this stuff, right? Like that's part of the reason why I'm a good surveyor. Um, where is all this, where is like the menu and stuff on the server? It's under um, HR, I think, professional development. And the job descriptions are in there too. Okay, so that's how this works. So look, Elena's, Elena's the only one I think that went through her annual review. She's got money on her side of the ledger, right? That she's just gonna, and she'll match, she's studying for CST, when she gets her CST one, she'll match that, and that money will come out. Okay, same thing with Austin, right? Like Austin's gonna have his annual review here pretty quick, I think. He's gonna have points on the ledger. When he gets his part 107, that money will come out of my side of the ledger. Okay. So, question. Yes. So Austin gets a six dollar raise. Yep. And we think he's at he's in that twenty to thirty bracket or wherever he's at. So he's at twenty two or because he's at twenty four, and he gets a six dollar an hour raise. Now he's at thirty. Yep. But he hasn't gotten enough skill set to get into the next bracket. Okay, that's a good question. What get back yeah. into them? So the brackets on the career path are a rough bound okay. on. That's right. Right, because I want well-rounded surveyors, right? But look, chances are if Austin's got a CST and he's done what we've talked about, yeah. he's probably checking his boxes, right? Okay. But so th there is a bound there, a reasonable bound, and here's why. Um, can I have a, a junior mapper making 50 bucks an hour? No. I can't bill, I can't bill that, right? So the, listen, here's, here's what ultimately determines those bands, guys, is the hard cap on what I can bill the client. And it's generally three to one. Okay, it's three to one. So if you take your billing rate and divide by three, that's that's about as that's about the cap on the band. I can go a little bit above that, but I not a lot. Okay. Okay, and that's if everybody's on their A game. Yeah. Right? So the three to one band assumes everybody's doing a pretty good job. You know, if I if I can get a three to one, we can pull down a twenty percent profit. Okay, and, a, and like, guess who gets a big chunk of the 20% profit? We do. You guys do anyways, you get a big chunk of the 20%. But, so let's just, just do, do you guys know what our hourly rates are? Let's put them on the board. Let's go, let's go down the list, I'll tell you what the hourly rates are. So what's the first thing on the list? Just go down the middle. BLS. No, 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 at the top, sorry. Oh, the CAD tech. Oh, okay, CAD tech. Right now, I bill out at seventy-five bucks. Okay, so what's what what's the cap on that hourly wage at a three to one? Twenty-five. Okay. Okay. Then we got junior mapper, right? Okay, I can tell you guys right now the junior mapper billing rate is ninety dollars. What's the cap? Thirty. Okay. Uh, then we got assistant surveyor, right? Okay, billing rate on assistant surveyors, 122. Oh, 120. Sorry. So what's the cap? 40. What's the cap on this list? 40. So did I just make these numbers up? No. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, then what's next? Seniors. Okay, senior surveyor. Uh, I think we're billing a senior surveyor out at around 150. Okay. I'd have to look to be sure. So Caps, what's the cap? Cap's 50. Okay, and then I bill myself at. Uh, we'd like to get 200. We're not quite getting 200. So. 180. So what's my cap? 60. Now here's what happens. This is what I when, when I tell you guys the market ultimately constrains what I can bill. 
Um, I priced an alt surveyed sack for 20 grand. We didn't get it. What does that mean? Too high. The guy was in a hurry. That means we were high. So there is a limit, right? There's a limit to how high I can go on billable rates. You know, as, as the costs go up, we get less work. And that's okay within reason. Here's the other thing I want you guys to remember. We got a couple clients right now that we're doing business with that, that have asked for a 20% break on the rate schedule. So those numbers are actually 20% lower. Now I'm gonna tell you what happened to me a big chunk of my career is I was bill, I was licensed at 28. So I was billing out at this rate, and you know what my wage was? Oh, yeah. That's what I was making when I quit my first job. I was licensed in two states, I had my C-Feds, and I was running a team of eight to 10 people. Remember I told you I got a $25 an hour raise when I went? Guess what? So look, I had to figure this math out the hard way. Do you guys have to? Yeah. I'm telling you right now. If you know about what I can bill you at, you know what you should be getting paid, roughly. I don't think anybody's outside of these ranges that we've talked about right here. Everybody's right where they need to be, roughly, because we try and pay fair. Okay, now let's